So we're settling into our comfortably tall seat. You might have your eyes closed. If it feels better, you could leave your eyes open. You can start to tune into what you feel and how you feel. Starting to pay attention to your body. I know my experience over the last couple of days has been a lot of conflicting ideas and emotions and discussions with people that I don't necessarily agree with and trying to entertain other people's points of view. So I've got a lot spinning and swirling around in my mind right now. And you may have a similar experience. So I invite you to simply let that spinning occur, but start to pay attention to your body. And notice in your body, maybe where some of those emotions are felt. What you're feeling where, and this is simply a matter of observation. There's no need to label these things good or bad or right or wrong. You may find yourself labeling them pleasant or unpleasant, like, ooh, I don't like that feeling in my chest. Uh, and that's okay too, when those, when those kind of thoughts come in. But we'll just give ourselves a moment to feel it in our bodies. And then in particular, start to feel the support beneath you. So even in the midst of maybe these swirling ideas and energetic thoughts, you can come to a sense of grounding, a relationship with gravity, feeling the pull of gravity, feeling the support of your sitting prop. Feeling how that support then allows you to balance in your seated pose, vertebra upon vertebra, shoulders over hips, ears over shoulders, sensing through your whole body. And you might notice places that feel really good and you might notice places that feel a little more challenged or uncomfortable. And again, observation, curiosity, doing your best not to judge. And if you do judge, don't judge yourself for judging. Acquainting ourselves with experience. You can notice where you are right in this moment, how you feel right in this moment, and that's okay. One of my favorite yoga teachers, when we do this sort of observational meditation, her cue is, this moment is like this. And you could notice all of the adjectives that might go with this moment without attaching anything to them. This moment is like this. I simply experience it. And then as you get a little more settled in your body and as you get a little more settled on your mat, you can start to turn attention to your breath and notice what's going on there. You may notice that simply settling into your body has slowed your breath down. And you can encourage that now by lengthening inhalations and exhalations. So let's lengthen our breath a little longer than when we breathe out of habit, trying to bring in breath and out breath to match. And if you're familiar with the practice of ujjayi pranayama, at any point you can bring in your ujjayi breath, getting a little whispering sound at the back of your throat. A little more intensity and intention and length to your breath. And then somewhere in your next few breaths, you can begin to move with inhalation and exhalation. You can rock over to one sit bone and let your pelvis spill forward, rock over to the other sit bone and rock back. I personally find that this movement makes sense if I'm inhaling through the front half of the circle and exhaling through the back half of the circle. But if that suggestion does not suit your breath, if it doesn't feel intuitive to you, you can easily reverse that. You could exhale through the front half and inhale to the back half if that feels better. So we'll start with these circles. So then the pelvis circling around on the base that you're sitting on. And then you can allow each vertebra to circle. So maybe this gets a little more fluid and it gets a little bigger and it gets a little juicier and you can roll your shoulders and you can roll your neck and head. The circles can be as big or as small as you like. 
They can be as fast or as slow as you like. They can be as dramatic or as subtle as you like. And eventually we'll kind of spiral our way back to the center and pause and then reverse, beginning again just with this rolling around in the pelvis. Go to one sit bone and forward, to the other sit bone and back, and then those movements can grow. And we get this swirling sensation along the length of the spine. We get vertebra sliding on vertebra. We get shoulders and head and neck moving. And the pace of the circles can be as big or as small as you like. They can be as fast or as slow, as dramatic or as subtle. But it's an almost intuitive movement. And a sensation of movement that feels good. Lovely, we'll spiral our way back to the center. You can slide yourself off your sitting prop. And from here, you'll roll down onto your back. So you can plant the soles of your feet into your mat, roll down onto your back, and then let's press into our feet, lift our hips, a little bit of a bridge pose, and you'll slide your support now under your sacrum. So whatever you were sitting on, now goes under your sacrum and you move it towards the tailbone side. Moving it to the tailbone side, letting your front ribs drop in, letting your back extend. You might just stay here for a few moments in a posterior pelvic tip. So you've got the top rib of the pelvis kind of spilling towards the back body. Your tailbone is lengthening towards your knees. We're just starting to get a little more length in our low back here, take a couple of breaths. And from here, we can slide right leg out straight. You'll try to keep your heel on the floor, toes pointing straight up to the ceiling and dropping your right thigh bone down. So when I'm in this position, I've got my hip elevated and my heel on the floor. So I have an extension in my right hip. I can start to stretch into my right hip flexors in a very gentle way here, where I don't have to hold my body weight. And then if this feels good, stay here. If you'd like a little more, you can pull your left knee in Take your hand behind your knee and start to slide your knee up towards your shoulder. So now I'm essentially in a lunge, but I don't have to hold my body weight so my hip flexions can stretch a little bit better. We'll hold here for a while and you can circle out your left ankle. Give it a circle one way, give it a circle the other. And then somewhere in the next couple of breaths, we'll try to keep our hips level, but take the left knee out to the side a little bit. And you may notice a slight shift in where you feel the stretch in your right hip. A couple more breaths here. Thought my assistant has arrived. <laughs> we can bring the left knee back in. Slide your left foot back to the floor. Slide your right foot in. Take the sole of your right foot back to the mat. We can take a moment here in a symmetrical position. And then eventually we'll extend the left leg. Extending your left leg out straight, dropping your thigh bone, dropping your lower ribs. Maybe this is enough, enough extension in your left hip to get a good stretch if you'd like a little more. We'll pick up the right leg. You can grab the back of your right knee and start to slide your knee towards your shoulder. So we're essentially in a lunge, and then you can circle your right foot, circling one way, circling the other. And finally, we'll take this right knee slightly out to the side. So trying to keep your hips level, we'll take the right knee out to the side, and you may notice a little shift in where you feel the stretch in your left hip. And we can bring this foot back in. We can float this foot back down to the floor. Slide your left knee back in. And once more, pause in our symmetrical position. Notice how this feels. Beautiful. So keeping our hips elevated, this time we'll reach right foot up towards the ceiling. You can externally rotate here, cross your right ankle over your left knee. So we're moving into a figure four with our hips elevated. 
And now from here, if it feels good to you, you can slide your left knee in. So we're sliding the left knee in. We've got tailbone sort of pointing up towards the ceiling, getting a really nice stretch in the low back here. You can even grab the back of your left thigh. We're keeping right foot flexed to stabilize right knee. Whether you want lengthening sitting bones away from shoulders. Maybe getting a hollowing sensation in our bellies and we'll take two more breaths here. We're going to exhale, release the left foot back down to the mat. You can uncross your legs, release your right foot back down to the mat. Once more, pause in your symmetrical position. And let's inhale, extend the left leg. Externally rotate, we'll cross the left ankle over the right. So we're in our figure four position. This might be enough stretch. If you'd like a little more, this will bring it into your low back as well. You can pick up your right leg. Start to hug your knee in, and now tailbone is kind of angling up towards the ceiling. We're getting a nice lengthening in the low back as well as a stretch across the sacrum. We'll take one more breath here. And you can allow your right foot to touch back down. We'll release the left foot back down to the mat. Once more, pausing here. And then ground it to your feet just enough to lift your hips off your support. We'll slide the support out from underneath us. Just hinge down in your hips. You're coming down with a neutral spine. Coming down onto your sacrum. And then walk your feet out wide, like about the width of your mat. And as you inhale, ground it to your feet. You can pull with your hamstrings. Let's so lift up into a wide-footed bridge pose. wide foot bridge pose, you can kind of sway your hips a little side to side, maybe press a little more with one foot, press a little more with the other. And eventually we'll roll back down onto our backs. You can walk your feet in close now, so feet are a touching. Hug your inner thighs in. Lifting back up into your bridge pose here probably won't lift as high as you're used to. That's okay, just keep squeezing your knees in towards each other as you press up. Press into your feet, use your glutes. And you can release your hips back down towards the floor. Walk your feet out wide, back to about the width of your hips, and let's come back up into a bridge pose here. We're pressing straight down into the soles of your feet, Try lifting your toes for a moment, spread them out, and then release them back down to the floor. And then try lifting your heels for a moment. Really lift your hips, and then drop your heels down by dropping your thigh bones down. Let's take two more breaths and set the bambasana. And you can exhale and roll down. And then hug your knees into your chest, rocking in and out, drawing circles, whatever feels good. So eventually we'll start to rock and roll here. You can rock back towards your shoulders, forward towards your hips. And we're going to make our way all the way up to standing. So if you're feeling spry today, you might be able to rock back and rock all the way up to standing, just without using your hands or maybe giving yourself a little boost behind. Nice work. I don't think I'm gonna try demonstrating that today. I'm just gonna help myself up. <laughs> so we'll stand at the top of our backs, finding a mountain pose. And then arms can arise. Take your arms up overhead with an exhalation, side bend to the right. We'll reach left hand way up and over, right hand can slide down, right leg. You'll inhale, rise back up to vertical. Exhale, take the side bend to the other side. And inhale, rise back up to vertical. Just a couple more times, swaying side to side. As your torso reaches, you can allow your hips to shift the opposite direction. We're really creating some spinal mobility here. When you've moved an equal number of times to each side, you can get back up to the center. Let's bend our knees a little bit. 
really grounding down into the centers of our heels, base of big toe, base of little toe, a little internal rotation in your upper thighs. Maybe sitting bones starting to reach back a little bit as we hinge forward. Pelvis is spilling around the top of the femurs. We'll try to narrow this angle at our hips. And then little fingers can find creases of elbows if that feels good. You can start to press into your feet a little bit. You can release your head and neck. If it feels good, you can try swaying your torso side to side, but maybe it feels good just to stay still. We'll release our hands down towards the floor. Take one more exhalation. Really pull your belly in towards your spine and see if that draws you deeper into your forward fold. And then you can inhale and come all the way back up to standing. Moving back through your side bends. Exhale, side bend right. Inhale to rise. Exhale, side bend left. Inhale to rise. Let's exhale and fold. This time holding Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold. So we'll think about maybe bending our knees a little bit, unlocking the hips. Lifting sitting bones up and back. Really take your sitting bones back. Really take your thigh bones back. Belly will hug up and in. And we want our hands on something. So feeling the floor out in front of you feels a little far. You can grab a support. You can also put your hands on your shins or your thighs. We're going to think about moving towards a neutral spine here. So belly's hugging in. We've got a sense of mula bandha at the base of the pelvis. We've got a sense of uriana bandha hugging the belly up and in. And we've got jalandara bandha lifting the roof of your mouth. Now maybe we can make some space across collarbones. Beautiful. Maybe we can make a little more space between sit bones and crown. As you exhale, come all the way back down to your full forward fold. And we'll inhale, rise all the way up to standing. Exhale, move to your side bend right. You can inhale and rise. Exhale, move to your side bend left. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. We'll inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step it back to plank pose. I'm gonna let you guys do plank on your own. Very nice. Hold your plank. Yeah. So you've got your wrists under your shoulders, fingers are spread broad across your collarbones, lifted in your upper thighs and reaching through your heels, very nice. And then just notice what you're looking at, where your gaze is. And the uh, two video feeds that I can see, it looks like you're both looking down. So see if you can lift your gaze and look out in front of you a little bit, yeah. So if you think about it, your head is what, like 15 pounds, something like that? When you let your head drop in plank, you're hanging 15 pounds of dead weight off your plank. If you lift your head and use the muscles at the back of your neck, it lightens up the plank a little bit. Gorgeous, try one more breath. When you exhale, slowly in control, lower all the way down to your belly. Coming down onto your belly, and we'll work through a series of hover poses. So first one, really nice little release for low belly and low back. Let's do cobra, almost like we would as a yin pose. So you can start with your feet above the width of your mat. You can take your elbows under your shoulders and just hang out here, almost a sphinx style. Drawing your shoulders back, pulling your heart forward, and relatively relax through your legs and hips. So just see how this goes. Inviting some stretch and opening into low belly and low back. And if this is feeling pretty good and you want to go farther, you could prop yourself up. Maybe you lift it up into a seal pose, arms straight. We'll give this another couple of breaths. You can exhale and release. We'll bend our knees, feet to the ceiling. Just shake your shins side to side a little bit. Release any tension that might have developed from that. All right, a little more active version of Cobra now. Walking your feet in to be about the width of your hips. We'll take hands to the floor, just forward of our shoulders, press into the tops of our feet, hug the belly in, lift shoulders, lift base of skull, lift hands. So now we're really working musculature along the whole length of your spine. We're lifting at the base of the skull. Maybe we still have Mula Bandha at the base of the spine, Uriana Bandha in the belly, Jalandara Bandha lifting the base of your skull and keeping your neck long. You can exhale and lower. So this time, hands right in line with your shoulders, elbows hug in. We'll lift, 
Come up into our cobra and take a little weight into your hands. You can almost pull with your hands as you drag yourself into the pose. Yeah, oh, you guys look amazing. All right, exhale and lower. Let's do one more little shaking of the shin side to side, relieving that work in our low back. And we'll take one more prone back bend. You might come back up into a cobra, maybe walking your hands back a little more this time. Maybe you're ready for upward facing dog. So you'd like to take it to upward facing dog, feel free to do so, being on the palms of your hands and the tops of your feet. Shoulders rolling back. Let's take one more breath, feeling the lift of the pelvic floor, Mula Bandha, the lift in the abdomen, Uddhya Bandha, the lift at the base of the skull, Javanara Bandha. Exhale to release. You can inhale to hands and knees. When you exhale, you'll take downward facing dog. So finding your way into downward facing dog, you can take your time. Maybe you'd like to reposition hands or feet. Maybe you'd like to bend your knees and work on tipping sitting bones up. You might like to shake your hips side to side, continuing our exploration of lateral movement. You might like to walk it out. You can turn your head side to side. So we'll spend maybe two or three more breaths exploring the down dog. And then we'll spend two breaths holding in down dog. And you might even lengthen these breaths a little more than you were breathing before. So these are slightly longer breaths, perhaps. Nice. From here, you can bend your knees and look forward and move your feet to your hands. You could walk, you could step, you could float. Taking it to a half forward fold, lovely. Full forward fold as you exhale. Let's inhale, rise all the way up. So this time, moving into a twist, slightly bend your knees, we've got our feet the width of our hips, hips stay squared to the front of the mat. When you exhale now, part your hands, use your core strength, twist to the right and extend your arms. We'll inhale back to center, twist the, to the left and extend your arms. We're just moving back and forth in this twist, knees just a little bit bent. Let's see whether you can keep your knees parallel with each other. Takes a little action in the thighs. Takes a little action in the core. Takes a little action in the feet, if I'm honest. So go one more time to each side. You can inhale, return to the starting position, exhale and fold it with lesson. Inhale, lift yourself halfway up. Exhale, take your feet back. Find your plank and lower. You can lower to your belly, you can lower to your knees, you can lower to chaturanga. Nice chaturanga. Inhale through upward facing dog. Exhale to downward facing dog. From your downward facing dog this time, ground down into both hands, grab your left foot, lift your right foot straight up and back off your mat. Nice. So now you can stack your hips, turning your right hip over your left, Bend your right knee. You're going to start to draw your right heel towards your left hip. Use the back of your leg. So we're using the back of our leg here, firming glutes, firming hamstrings to help the front of the leg open up a little bit. Nice. So one more exhalation here. One more inhalation here. As you exhale, square your hips and bring your right foot forward, taking a lunge. We've got our right foot forward, left toes back. You can hug inner thighs in. Reach out through your heel. If it feels good, reach your arms up. We can start to play with this a little bit. Try sliding your left knee down towards the floor, but don't quite touch. And then stand it back up. And you can slide your left knee down towards the floor, but don't quite touch. And stand it back up. One more like that. Sliding your knee down towards the floor. Stand it back up. Exhale, flow through vinyasa. Hands reach back to the mat. Step back, chaturanga, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Establish your down dog, and then you can inhale and lift your left foot, taking left foot straight up and back, and then stacking left hip over right. Bend your left knee, use your hamstrings, use your glutes, pull that left heel towards your right hip. And then notice if you're tipping over, you guys actually both look really symmetrical, it's awesome. Sometimes when we do this, the right hip will start to drop towards the right shoulder. So see if you can lengthen the right side of your waist a little bit. When you exhale, you'll square your hips and take your left foot forward between your hands, high lunge, balancing on your right toes. 
Inhale, if you like, reach up. And let's play with the lunge a little bit. You can exhale and lightly brush your right knee down towards the floor, but don't quite touch. And stand it back up. And lightly slide your right knee down to the floor, but don't quite touch. And stand it back up. One more. Sliding your knee down towards the floor. Reaching back up and exhale through your vinyasa back to chaturanga. And upward dog. And downward dog. Mm, settling in downward facing dog. Full inhalation. Full exhalation. At the end of your next breath, you can bend your knees and look forward. Move your feet to the outside of your hands. So you might step, you might hop, but your feet will come wide. Yes. So wide feet. Let's stand up into a half squat. You can take your hands to your knees. And let's work a little cat and cow here. So hands on your knees as you inhale, fibers are dropping back, hips reaching back, heart can reach forward and up. And you'll exhale, engage and around. And inhale and reach. And exhale and around. A few more rounds like this, leading perhaps with your sitting bone. So the pelvis moves as you breathe and the rest of your spine follows. We'll make our way back to a neutral position, sitting bones reaching back a little bit, finding some space between sitting bones and tailbone. And now as you exhale, take a twist to the right. Left shoulder can twist towards right knee. You can inhale back to center and right shoulder can twist towards left knee. And inhale back to center. So just a couple of times side to side like this. Nice. When you've done this an equal number of times to each side, come back to the center. We'll inhale, rise all the way up to standing. You can step your feet to the width of your hips. Take your arms up overhead and exhale, fold for Upanasana. Inhale, lift halfway up. Plant your hands. You can step or float through Vinyasa. Back to Chaturanga, upward facing dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. Let's inhale and lift the right leg straight up and back at first. And you can bend your knees, stack your hips. If you like wild thing and you feel ready for it, you could flip your pose over here. Nice, so much control, well done. If you're in the wild thing, flip it back. With your next exhalation, shift forward, three-legged plank. Try to touch your right knee to your right shoulder. Beautiful, inhale, press back. Exhale, shift forward, right foot comes between your hands. So we'll inhale, coming up to the high lunge. And now as you exhale, twist your lunge. You'll reach out through your left heel, turn to the right. And you can scissor your inner thighs in. Maybe you start to reach your left hand down towards the floor on the inside of your right foot. Maybe you start to extend your right leg. So now we're moving almost into a revolved triangle, except that your left heel will be off the floor. Nice. One more breath here, pressing into the base of your right big toe. And as you inhale, you can bend back into your right knee. You can reach up with your right hand, pick yourself up. Unwind your twist on your next in-breath and flow through the vinyasa with your next exhalation. Nice, so meeting back in down dog. And then you'll inhale and take your left foot up. Start it up and back at first. And then stacking hips, bending knee, maybe reaching with your foot, flipping it into wild thing if you so desire. Very nice. If you're in the wild thing, you'll flip it back over, stepping back to three-legged down dog. Next exhalation, three-legged plank, shifting forward, left knee towards left shoulder. Inhale to press back. Next exhalation, shift forward, left foot between your hands. And reach, high lunge. Scissoring your inner thighs in, you're activating the legs towards each other. Let's twist to the left. Maybe reach with your right hand, hinging towards the floor. 
and maybe work towards the revolved triangle variation. Left leg extends towards straight as we lift left sitting bone up and away from left heel. Nice, the next inhalation, you can bend your front knee. Lift yourself back upright. Unwind your twist and flow through vinyasa on your next out breath. Back to chaturanga, an upward dog and downward dog. Let's take two more slow, steady breaths in downward facing dog. And we'll again move feet forward with the next exhalation. And again, we'll take our feet wider than our hands. So walking your feet or stepping your feet or hopping your feet to the outside of your hands. Nice. So you can inhale and stand all the way up. We've got our feet about that width apart. You may find toes pointing a little out and heels a little in. But try for a little internal rotation. We'll come through a series of squats. So as you inhale, you can take your arms up and overhead as you exhale, hips reach back, heart reaches forward, lower yourself down to Malasana. And then as you inhale, hips lead, roll up. You'll exhale and lower. Inhale and lift. A few more rounds like this. Exhaling to Malasana. Inhaling, leading with your hips to rise. The next time you come down into Malasana, you can stay here. We'll think about upper arms pressing into inner knees. We'll think about lengthening from sitting bones to collarbones to crown. And maybe you can also tune back into bandhas here. A little lift of the pelvic floor, a lift in the abdomen, a lift at the roof of the mouth. We'll spend two more breaths in Malasana. And to exit, you can either come out of it the way we have been, inhaling to roll up, or if you feel so inclined, you could try rocking forward into Bakasana from here. I'm obviously not going to demonstrate that one today, but you could take your elbow or your upper arms right on your inner knees, hand out in front of you, rock forward, elbows bend, heart moves forward, and you might be able to get your feet off the floor for the hand balance, crow pose. Nice. So if you are in the crow, you can either step back down to the floor or you could hop back through vinyasa. The rest of us will stand at the top of our mats and inhale, reach up. We'll all meet back in downward facing dog. Exhale and fold. Let's inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, plant hands, step or float back through your vinyasa. So with your next inhalation, <clears throat> pardon me, you can shift forward to plank and then slowly over the course of about on a count of five, lower to the floor. So lowering five, four, three, two, nice work, one, lay down on your belly. All right, so we're laying on our bellies. Let's now Rest chin or forehead on the floor. And take your hands back behind you, palms down if you can. We'll take a moment to press the tops of our feet into the mat, hug the belly in, and then lift the fronts of our shoulders, lift the base of our skull. You can exhale here. You can inhale, lift your hands. Exhale here. Inhale, lift your legs. Maybe the toes can move towards each other. Keep rolling the fronts of your shoulders back. Keep lifting the base of your skull. Let's take two more breaths in Shalabhasana. You'll exhale and lower. Turn your face to one side if you like, or make a pillow loop for your head with your arms. And we'll take some rest. If you've got your head turned, Turn it the other direction for a few breaths.
You can turn back to the center. So this time, let's prop ourselves up on the left elbow. Left elbow under left shoulder. You'll angle your forearm across. And let's see about bending right knee now. Using glutes, using hamstrings, you're going to pull your right knee in towards your right hip. You can lengthen your right knee back. This might be as far as you want to go. If you have a yoga strap, you can loop it. You might even be able to grab your foot or ankle and draw this foot in closer to your hip. What we're looking for here is lengthening in quads and hip flexors. You can think about taking your tailbone back towards your right knee. You can think about lifting your hip point up towards your lower ribs. You can think about drawing that right heel in towards your right hip. Nice. You can exhale and release this side. We'll come to the other side. You can support on your right arm. Angling the forearm across the left knee will bend, reaching left knee towards the back of the mat, reaching tail towards left knee. You can reach back, grab your left foot, maybe pull your heel in towards your hip. If it's out of reach, you can grab a pant leg or you could use a strap. And then we're really thinking about lifting the left hip point towards the left lower ribs, thinking about pulling navel in towards spine. We're looking for extension in the front of your left hip and left quads. Nice, we can exhale and release that. As you inhale, press up to hands and knees, and let's take our knees wide, big toes together, and press back to an active child's pose. So tips of your fingers pressing into the mat as you reach your hips back, arms strong and long. And now breathing into your lower back ribs and your low back vertebrae. From here, we'll exhale, walk both hands over to the side, reach back, and come back to the center on an in-breath, walk both hands the other way, reach back, and we can inhale back to center, walk ourselves upright, and here, let's bring our knees together. So knees moving in, we've got them in line with our hips, maybe even touching. Let's come back into our child's pose here. And this will probably give you a deeper stretch in your lumbar spine. Hands could be out in front again, but it might also feel really good to take your hands back beside you and bring your forehead down to the mat. Nice. From here, we'll inhale, walk your way upright. You can shift your hips to one side. Let's take feet out in front. Kind of upavishta konasana. So take your legs out to about a 90 degree angle. Might be a little bit wider, might be a little bit narrower. So think about maybe walking our sit bones back a little bit. So if you can walk your sit bones back, you may be able to sit slightly more upright with a little bit of a neutral curve in your spine. Checking in with your toes. There are usually two tendencies here. One is sometimes the toes roll out like this in external rotation. So if this was the case, my knees are kind of pointing out this way, I want to internally rotate until my knees are pointing to the ceiling. Flex my feet, activate that way. The other thing that happens is sometimes legs roll in. So if your legs are doing this, you want to think about grounding the heads of your femurs, pointing your knees to the ceiling once more, pointing your toes to the ceiling. Wherever you happen to be, let's activate our legs. Lift heels off the floor if you can. So really active in your legs. And then let your heels come back down. Keep your feet active. Reach through the balls of your feet without letting your heels slide. And notice if that doesn't just give you a little more space in your hips. Yeah, so from here, the eight bones are relatively fixed. We're going to spill the pelvis forward and come into our forward fold. And that might mean hands behind. That might mean hands out in front. It might mean if you're pretty flexible, you could reach for your big toes and work some stability here as you hug in and hover.
So your next inhalation, help yourself back up, right? And let's keep left leg extended out to the side. You can bend your right knee and take the sole of your right foot to your left upper inner thigh. So we've got our left toes pointing out. We've got the right foot here. Find a twist here. As you press it to your fingertips, you can rotate around to the right. And then we'll side bend left. You can bring your elbow maybe to your thigh, maybe to the floor on the inside of your left knee. You can start bringing your left hand towards your left foot. You might want to use your right hand for an assist here. You can take your right hand to your left ribs. Lift your rib cage, hug your ribs in and rotate them around to the right, giving you a little more rotation and then let your right arm come up and overhead. You could use the weight of your right arm to help your right side to stretch. You could support the base of your skull with your right hand. You could even try reaching for your left little toe with your right hand. Oh, it's so close. It's so hard teaching online. I have a really nice adjustment for this one that would absolutely bring your foot into reach. <laughs> there it is. Oh, you can inhale up yourself all the way back up. And let's switch sides. You'll take your right leg out to the side, bend your left knee, sole your left foot to right upper inner thigh. We can take your right hand in front, left hand behind, and rotate, twisting belly and ribs and chest and shoulders. And it becomes a side bend. Maybe your right elbow finds your thigh. Maybe it finds the floor to the inside of your knee. You can reach your right hand towards your right foot, perhaps even getting a hold of the big toe side. You can do this little adjustment, taking left hand to lower right ribs, lifting your rib cage on an inhalation, helping yourself rotate on an exhalation. And then reaching left arm over. And maybe you use the weight of the arm to help you stretch. Maybe you support your head and get your neck a little longer. Maybe you can reach your right little toe. Nice, we'll inhale, make our way back upright. You can extend both legs straight out in front of you for a moment. Just rock them side to side a few times. All right, so coming back to the left side, let's bend the right knee. Almost like you're gonna sit cross-legged. And then we'll support the left leg, right hand on left foot, left hand on left knee, just kind of stir it around a few times. We're getting some rotation in our hip. Yeah, and this may feel really good. You could stay with this. Uh, you can also start to work into the outer hamstrings a little bit. Try taking a hold out of your foot, one hand on each side, and with an inhalation, extend the leg. With the exhalation, draw your knee out to the side. Inhaling here, exhaling here. All right, so coming back to our cradling of the shin, this time sitting a little taller, hugging it in a little bit more, you could even bring your knee to the crook of your elbow, your foot to the crook of your right elbow and cradle it here. This might be your pose. Anyone is feeling particularly bendy and wants to go for it, we can go to compass pose from here, Astravakasana or pardon, pardon me, Surya Yantrasana. You could also go to Ashtabhakasana if you want to. That's the hand balance that comes from here. If you want to go to the compass pose, we'll start bringing this shin over to the left and twisting away from it so that you can work your upper arm or even your shoulder to the inside or the back of your left knee. Right hand would come to the little toe side of left foot. Left hand comes out to the side and this leg works towards straight. Nice. All right, so the hand balance, if anyone wants it, since you guys both look so fantastic in Surya Yantrasana, again, I can't demonstrate it, but you would hook this knee over your upper arm, cross your feet, hands to the floor, bend your elbows, shifting forward, and your torso goes that way, and your legs go that way, and your hips pop off the floor. I'm giving blank looks, and I can't show you, so let's just drop that one. <laughs> oh, I can't wait until I can do hand balances again. Um, all right, let's switch sides. So we've got left leg, basically like you're going to sit cross-legged. We'll just support right leg, hand and foot, and take a few moments to stir it around. And after 
doing that a few times, it can be nice to draw your knee back on an exhalation and extend on the inhalation. And we can come back to cradling, maybe sitting a little taller. You can try putting foot in the crease of your elbow, knee in the crease of the opposite elbow. See if I can do Surya Yantrasana on this side. This knee draws back. You work your elbow or upper arm or even shoulder into the back of the right knee. Left hand finds right foot. This leg extends. Your right hand starts to reach down towards the floor. I don't quite have enough grip strength on this side. You guys, on the other hand, look amazing. Nice job. When you're ready to release, release of an exhalation, you can unpretzel. Lovely. Let's take our feet out in front of us now. Take your feet, let's say, I don't know, 18 inches from your hips, a little farther than your knees are from each other for diamond pose. You can rock your sit bones back. We'll spell the pelvis forward, round forward. If you like, you can cuff your feet. Forehead can begin to melt down towards the cradle of your feet. You can even bring your hands under your shins and cradle this way if that feels better to you, almost like a tortoise pose. Melting into this forward fold. Wherever you happen to be, you'll take three slow, deep breaths. As you inhale, pump yourself back upright. Let's reach our legs out, soles of our feet on the floor, and roll down. See if you can roll down over a count of five. So five, four, three, two, one. Coming back down onto your back. Let's walk our feet back in, hip distance apart. One more, very, one more round of Sitha Bandhasana. So we'll exhale here, hug in with the hamstrings, press into our feet, inhale, lift. We're thinking about taking tailbone towards knees, knees towards the wall opposite you. You can rock from shoulder to shoulder here, maybe lift up a little higher. You can lift your heels, get your sacrum a little higher, and then drop your thigh bones down. You continue to lift the sides of the pelvis. Notice if you're rolling weight into the outer edges of your feet. Activate from inner knees to sit bones. When you come out of your bridge, rather than rolling down this time, see if you can keep this nice curve you've got in your lumbar. Just hinge down at the hips. Set your long, straight spine down on the mat. Nice. When your sacrum touches down, you can pick your feet up, hug your knees in, draw some circles, rock them in and out, rock side to side. And somewhere in your next breath or two, come to happy baby pose. Knees will come wide, feet will face the ceiling. You can reach up with your hands, grab your feet, and pull on your feet. See if a little more of your spine can drop to the floor. See if your knees can drop a little lower. It might even feel good to pull slightly more on one foot and then slightly more on the other. So you rock slightly side to side. You can stay here in your happy baby pose. You could extend your legs for a reclining version of Ubhavishta Konasana. And eventually bring your legs back together. You can bend your knees, let your feet come down to the floor. Notice if there are any movements your body needs before you complete your practice. If there's anything else you need to do to make those movements, if you are ready for Shavasana, get as comfortable as you can. Mm -hmm. 
So melting your way into a comfortable and supported position. Once more, your attention goes into what you feel in your body. Noticing what's here now. Then notice your breath. Notice if you're still trying to control it. Do your best to let that effort go. You can receive the inhalation. You can surrender the exhalation. Notice where your attention is being drawn. You can let it drift. Lighting gently on different parts of your experience without settling it too long, too intently. Drawing your attention to be fluid. Perhaps eventually, even the motion of your attention becomes more subtle. You can notice everything at once, rather than drifting from one topic to another. Everything is contained within your attention. Your attention can even notice your attention. fully relaxed, fully resting, fully alert, aware of all of your experience. And at the same time, aware of your awareness of that experience. And now gently, as it feels right to you, with intention, begin to deepen your breath. Draw in an inhalation right to your belly. Completely empty with your next exhalation. Creating space for the next in-breath to bring in even more vitality. And with the deepening and awakening of your breath comes an awakening of the energy that animates your body. When you feel that, you'll feel a desire to move, honor it. You can wiggle fingers, wiggle toes, start to move hands and feet, start to move arms and legs. Oh, no right or wrong here. Just find the movements that feel really good as you wake yourself up. And eventually you can let those movements carry you to one side. Pause for a moment on your side. And when you feel ready to rise, use the strength of your arms to help yourself up. You can return to sitting on your support if that feels good to you. We'll just take a moment to once more notice what's here now. Maybe some things have changed. Maybe some things are the same and that's okay too. 
noticing what's going on in your mind, noticing what's going on in your breath, noticing how your body feels now. And finally, you can turn your hands out to the side, palms up, and with an inhalation, reach your arms up and overhead. With your exhalation, you can bring your hands down the midline of your body to your heart, pausing in Anjali Mudra, gesture of greeting and of gratitude and of respect. And let's close chanting Om together. So you can join me from wherever you are. You're also welcome to simply sit and listen if that feels better to you. If you'd like to join, we'll inhale together and begin. Um, thank you all so much for being here this afternoon. So great to practice with you. Namaste. Well done.